Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. Today, I'm coming to you live from Miami, Florida. This week, I'm at the Family Office Club Super Summit, which attracts some of the most accomplished private wealth managers in the industry. We spent several days in a large conference setting and in one-on-one conversations with the people who manage the investments for some of the world's most affluent. These folks have the task of making sure the money of the ultra-wealthy is put to work in a safe and responsible way. Attendees at the conference include both new and old money. Old money is the multi-generational wealth that's been passed down through several generations. New money is wealth that's been created in the current generation, usually through the hard work involving the growth of an active business. In some cases, that business has been sold and all that remains is a pile of cash, where there once was a business. I'm hearing several themes at this conference, and I'd like to share or highlight one of these with you. The one highlight is the word patience, but we'll come back to that later. Once wealth has been created, the focus shifts from wealth creation to wealth preservation. The ultra-wealthy have the same problems that all investors have, only on a larger scale. You're wondering where is a safe place to invest your retirement funds? Well, the same can be said of the ultra-wealthy. Interest-bearing paper assets traditionally have been seen as some of the safest asset classes in the world. But after a decade of low interest rates, these paper assets are anything but safe. As interest rates rise, the value of these assets decline. Why would I buy a bond that pays 3% interest when I can buy a newly issued bond of comparable quality today at, say, 5%? If I'm going to buy the 3% bond, I want to attach a discount to the purchase price to compensate for that lower interest rate. That way it's worth the same as today's new bond issue. When people talk about falling bond prices, that's exactly the mechanism that's in play. The stock market has been in bubble territory for quite a while, and it's only now starting to come back to more reasonable valuations. Looking at the market averages, all of the gains in 2018 have been erased, and on a historic basis, it's still expensive. If we face a recession in the near future, as is widely expected, many companies are going to see a fall in earnings, and this is going to translate into further losses in the stock market. At the moment, the stock market in general isn't looking like the safest place to put your money. For the wealthy, real estate plays have long been one of the most stable and secure investments. But today, there's hundreds of real estate investors scouring the landscape looking for funds to reposition older apartment complexes. For the ultra-wealthy, they're not that interesting because there's so many people chasing the same types of opportunities. The challenge is to stand out in the crowd. Investors are generally looking for private deals. They made their wealth usually by operating a business that transformed an industry, and they know that these types of ventures require certain characteristics from the principles. Each will have their own appetite, whether we talk about biotechnology, medical instrumentation, agriculture, financial technology, or maybe even a more traditional pure technology play. While these investment vehicles are broad and diverse, there's one common theme that came up over and over again. And I'm going to highlight that one and only theme. Wealth is simultaneously patient and impatient. People of wealth are not in a hurry to make a quick buck. They don't need to maximize their rate of return. If they make an extra 5% on their money, it's not going to change their life. They don't like to lose money, so it's far more important to protect than it is to maximize the growth in all circumstance. They are willing to be patient for their money to grow. Well, that's patience. So why are they impatient? Well, they are simultaneously very impatient. They understand that their most precious commodity is time. They have thousands of details and opportunities vying for their attention every day. They need to be very judicious about what to pay attention to. There's so much noise in the world that they have to make fast decisions about what to pay attention to. They will give you a very fast no. And they've learned it's better to give a fast no than to waste time on a maybe or an incorrect yes. If the no was the wrong answer, it'll become apparent soon enough. And if the no doesn't come back to haunt them, well, then it was the right answer. In order to get the attention of the ultra-wealthy, your message has to fall within the zone of their interest. It has to be clear, simple, and compelling. And if you can't communicate the essence of your message concisely and clearly in just a few seconds, you will lose their interest and their attention. So you're thinking about that. 
Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.